Jack this Jack. Joey, don't you think you're being just a little bit too hard on the franchise? Can't you see that this franchise is a man with a broken heart? Put yourself in his place. Haven't you ever had your heart broken? No, I'm the man who goes out there in just a few short minutes to achieve my destiny as a heavyweight champion of the world. But I can't help but think of Shane Douglas, a broken man. And despite what he may have said about his addiction to women, I have to know what broke Shane's heart was not a woman, was not a female being. It was the belt! See, Shane, you don't have a weakness for the women, although you might like the world to think so. You've got a weakness for the gold. That little symbol that tells you you are an important man in this world, Shane, that you're not a mid-card wrestler. Well, I'll stand here right now and I'll tell you you're not a mid-card wrestler. What you are right now is the link in my journey to the heavyweight championship of the world. And Shane, i got to face the fact that you are a man with an obsession for that belt that makes O.J. Simpson look like a matrimonial philanthropist. So Shane, you don't look at Cactus Jack and say, hey, my best friend is on his way to fulfill his destiny. You look at it like, hey, my best friend's trying to nail my old girl and he might do it better than me. Well, Shane, snap out of it and call this one down the line or I'll send you down the line on a very rocky road to Stanford. Bang, bang! Here you have it from the challenger, Cactus Jack. Tonight, it's our television show. Vocabulary too. Uh, I've been hits in the distant distance. It's all brand new. new. Yeah. You're through. I'm in the planetary uh, like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Welcome everybody. It is Ringtime Pro Wrestling. Back at it again. Keith the Keisha in the building. Keisha, say hi to the people. Hi everybody. What up though? How's everybody doing? I hope they're doing good. I hope everyone's doing good. This episode will start with a special disclaimer. I don't hate TNA. Oh, Lord. I don't wish bad things on TNA. Um, we're going to talk more about TNA than we usually do in any other episode, right? Pretty much. But it's because they've done something. Like, they have Slammiversary Sunday. Right. Mind you, we start so little of it. Didn't even do a preview show. Right? Right. Mind you, Keish, I do a lot of previews. Um, I look at a lot of numbers. Don't really get to spike when we do a TNA, no pun intended, preview. Right. Just don't. Like, I, people swear they care about TNA, but every time I do a TNA preview show, I ain't nobody there. Do a WWE preview show? Everybody Numbers through the roof. Everybody Numbers through the roof. Right. Everybody their grandmama listens. Of course. Right? Downloads up the wazoo. TNA, crickets. Nothing. Right? Nothing. This show won't even have a TNA title. Sorry. Mm-mm. It won't. The title will be something WWE centric, and they got a lot going on this week anyway. Right? Exactly. Which we will get to because July the 4th. I got to get up at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I don't know about the rest of y'all. I'll right? already be up. I'll be just getting off work. You know, I'll try to stay up. But I'm telling you, I'll be just clocking out at 5.30. I'm going to need my release to be on time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what's going down, right? Uh, we go at Japanese because uh, Saturday morning, I mean, Sunday morning, I got to do it again because it's, it it's a New Japan pay-per-view. Going down. So, it's going to be busy this weekend. Mm-hmm. That all being said, Slammiversary happened, right? Right. TNA's second biggest pay-per-view. Maybe they biggest. That is correct. Only thing that rivals it is Bound for Glory. Went down. This one is kind of special because the face of the company is going to change after this event, right? That is correct. A lot going on post this Slammiversary, 
right? Now, you may not know that some of the changes immediately because stuff is pre-taped and you'll see some people on Wednesday, but we'll get to what's going on, right? Right. Anyway, just in case you don't know, it's Ring Time Pro Wrestling. We are found a variety of ways. We're on Stitcher Radio. Search Ring Time Pro Wrestling. We are on iTunes. Search Ring Time Pro Wrestling. We are on Spreaker and a Spreaker Radio app. We are available on YouTube, which is good. We're available in the Two In Radio app. Um, we have on every social media platform you can think of: Tumblr, Google Plus, uh, Facebook, Twitter. You can find us anyway. And our favorite spot, RingTopProWrestling dot com. There's articles. There's things going on there. Uh, the Facebook page, I suggest you like it. I'm, all, I'm always posting clips. I'm posting something, talking about something. It's always there. So, without further ado, Slammiversary, Keish. Mm-hmm. All in all, thought it was a good show. No complaints about the show itself. Right. Uh, I thought the Pope did an excellent job on commentary. I thought uh, Josh Matthews kept his speed. Uh, it's kind of funny because I still have WWE in my head when I hear Josh Matthews. Yeah. But I was okay. I was okay Sunday, right? Can I just say that Damien Pope is one of the worst commentators I've ever heard in life. Like, oh my God, he's all, he's just awful. I'm sorry. Like, his voice is annoying. And all that, oh my God, if he says that again. Any kind of speech, one more time, I swear to you, I can't, I can't deal with him in commentary. I'm mean, going to need to I just, I can't, I'm sorry. Like, this is not going to work for me. I'm, I'm not with it. I, I enjoy his banter. No, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I think it's awful. Like, I think it's every level of awful. It's just retarded. It just sounds stupid. Shut up. I can't do it. So. I mean, he's gonna be there for now, fine. But I'm just, just, I'm just putting out there my own personal opinion. Uh, I think he's awful. I, I just, I can't. You are trying to have personal opinion. I mean, hey, we don't agree on everything. Everything is not a hundred percent here. Not at all. And if you think he is terrible, hey, that's it. That's you. If you think he the shits, he's the shits. I don't know. <laughs> It happens, right? It does. I, I'm not here to dispute that. Uh, first match, X Division match, usual, usual billing. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, T Gray Uno. I, I, I was called Tiger. Is T Gray? I have been corrected. I understand. I respect my mistakes. T Gray Uno, DJ Z, and Manic fought for the X Division title. DJ Z, yeah. I'm amazed DJ Z is still with the company. Yeah, I know, right? It was say people who, when he was trying to have surgery and raise money, got pissed at him. And, you know what I mean? Like, right. I I don't know, right? <laughs> but, either way, good match. I thought it was different, uh, elimination style, triple threat match. Yeah, I've never seen that before. I have the honesty to say, I've never seen Because I watched it and they're like, yeah, we wait for the first elimination. And I'm like, Say what? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, say what? Didn't you just say elimination? Wait, 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 wait. Also, oh. in the elimination matches, I always get confused when somebody breaks up a pin. Right. Cause it's like Why would you break you up a pin? When you want them to be gone, I didn't understand right. that either. Like, I guess elimination. I guess Bam, he's gone. gone. I guess with most wrestlers are used to traditional uh, triple threat matches. It's like, I want to say it's like second nature. You see them come going for the pin. Oh my God, he's going to win. You break it up. But that was the rules in this match. Like, this match was like, hey, you get 10 and you fall to submission, you out. Right. That's- like, I mean, you don't get bonus points for scoring the pinfall. So it threw the psychology off for me for a minute. But either way, it was a good match, what you expect for the X Division. High intensity, good speed. DJ Z gets knocked out early, so we leave Manic and T Gray Uno. Uh, I'll say this. 
I like Maddox now. I mean, I, it took me a while to adjust to him not being suicide and the whole angle where that fell apart. Yeah, that was awful. But watching him and just get the chance to adjust and watch him do his thing, good guy to ring, uh, explosive. But that T. Gray Uno got something, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he got it. He has it. He does. I I love him. I love him. He made this match to me. I have to. Um, he was awesome. And as said during the match, trained by Ray Mysterio Sr. Right. Who trained Ray Mysterio Jr., who is Ray's uncle, actually. Yeah. And you would think, A lot of people don't know. Yeah, and it's crazy because when he said that, I was like, wait, 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 what? But, yeah. Yeah, because he uh, he gave Ray the name, which is funny because he has a son that wrestles under Ray Mystico or something like that, who... Wrestles coincidentally in the Atlanta area with the Atlanta Luchadors and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I would go see him, but everything was always written in Spanish, so I can't quite figure some stuff out. <laughs> but one day, I'm going to catch him. But, yeah. That's either here nor there. Second match, I guess the bro bands is broken up. Oh, okay. no, it's over. It's over. All so, over. Robbie E. and Jesse... Um, uh, I've always liked Robbie E. I've never known what to think of Jesse. Yes. Through this feud and getting familiarized with them and their feud. Yeah. I see Jesse has some potential too. I don't know Robbie E. Like, I, I first thought he was just awesome, but after seeing him wrestle a few times, I realized that he's not that, he's really not that bad. Um, the match. No, the kid's pretty good. He's miscast a lot. And I mean, he's yeah. miscast. But pretty good. Like, I think ever since, you know, he ran with the Jersey Shore gimmick. And they was dueling Jersey Shore gimmicks. Right. I thought Robbie E. had the most long-term potential. And I think, you know, this was, you know, a culmination of that. Him as a baby face is kind of weird. Because he's always been a heel since I've been watching. Yeah. Always. So that's an adjustment, but so far so good. I just he just rubs me wrong for some reason, and it's not because he's a heel. It was before that, even when he was with the bromance and all that. It it was something about just I wasn't too fond of. You know. I mean, he comes out of professional wrestler casting, and that's not a bad thing, but it's like. Considering he came from like a reality TV show, it kind of seems like he's just not. You don't know if, if how deep he feels for this. Right is what I'll say. Right. Right. So and I didn't watch Big Brother when he was on it, so I don't know if Jesse is a Miz type. Like if you ever watched Real World with Miz when he was just Mike Miz or whatever, and he was the Miz, the character on the Real World. Right. The guy was a pro wrestling nut. He was a fan. He was a lifelong fan. So, I, that's where he's over with me. I don't know what to say the same about Jesse. No. I think mean, he might be a guy with a nice body who thought this is a route to Hollywood. Right. So we'll, but we'll see. I mean, to me, that that's the idea that I get from Jesse. Like, he wasn't always in the this, but figured, hey, I got the body. Let me do it. You know, I kind of figured it was something like that. And that's the kind of attitude he takes into it. So it's kind of, I, I question how influenced he is. Because sometimes when you look at him in a ring, you can kind of see, you know, like he, he's making it work. But I think that's all he's doing. In my mind, I feel like that's all he's doing. He's just trying to make it work. And... That to me sets the difference between, oh, I love this since I was a kid and I've always wanted to do this and this is my lead, you live in my dream. And oh, one day I figured I had the, the body and the bronze for all of it. So I tried it out and I kind of liked it, so I'm doing it out. You know, it's, that to me sets apart the rest of them and how much they really love this business and how much they really. So it's something, it's just, Jesse is just 
I don't know. I can't really get into them like that. I can't lie to myself because it's just, it's always a question in my mind. Not only that, but I mean, he's fairly good in the ring. I don't think, I think Robbie is better, but you know, that's just, of course he has the muscles and all that, but we fall to him that really. Um, but Robbie E wins. Smart move. Right. Push a star forward. Um, next match, a oldie but goodie return, Keish. Yes. One of, one of the three old school guys. Well, four old school guys have returned recently to the company. Um, after last Wednesday, Matt Morgan is back. Bully Ray is back, apparently. Her dead dad is back. And Daddy Jeff, Jeff Jarrett is back in the mix, right? Yes, he is. So all of that is going on, which I will get to some ideas of conspiracy theories and what what we got going over here, right? Mm-hmm. But Bram takes so Matt Morgan in a street fight. I think this is right up Bram's alley. Of course it is. Uh, I like that they went with Bram over Matt Morgan in the sense that they just didn't bring the old school guy back and put him over. Right. right? No. They took the guy who they go ride with and put him over. They put him over a legit seven footer who is a legit guy in the business. Matt been out for a while, ain't wrestled in two years. A lot of people were expecting a WWE return if he was gonna return to wrestling. And bam, here you go. He's on he's on impact. Right. And now, you know what I mean? Wednesday was kind of funny. He came in and saved Vader after Bram was about to be a whole Vader, a legend, an yeah. icon. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Uh, next match, Austin Aries defeats Davey Richards in a tag team stipulation match. Basically, uh, the winner gets to set, well, got to set the stipulation for their team in the, the fifth match in the five out of five, I mean, best of five tournament. Right. Uh, Austin Aries won. Now, the way things are going and what speculation is, is that they're probably going to lose the tag team titles because Austin's leaving the company. Right. But, hey, he won the match. So we'll see how that goes, I'm right? Ac- well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, watching the match now, and and it's over. The Wolves won 2-1. And fall. The rules are the tag team thing. Ha ha! Right, because it was a, uh, they chose a 30 minute Iron Man match. That is correct. So, you guys are getting live reporting. Keisha just happened to be watching Impact in the background. So, okay. now you got the result. That'll roll. A, you can roll in some Impact talk as we go along. Uh, I definitely will. I definitely so, will. I got it that, that, now. The Wolves that makes which makes sense as a result because Austin Aries, the Dirty Heels, could be champs because Austin Aries is rolling out. Right. This is probably that's probably his last show. So, you know, teach his own. Uh, Austin Cog and Brooke defeat the Dollhouse in a three hundred two handicap match. Awesome match. It was great. Now, th- there is speculation and rumor that Awesome Cog. And uh, Terry Terrell was leaving. Yeah. But um, now that's what that's been shot down. That's the only rumor of people leaving that's been shot down by TNA. They said that one, they're, they're on the long-term deals, right? Only right. one that's been shot down. Everyone not shot down. In a match of people who are leaving, James Storm defeated Magnus in a non-sanctioned match. I guess I, it should be down section because neither one of them gonna be there. Exactly. And I'm just uh, trying to figure this out. What is non section when you have a ref and I, somebody is explain this to me because I need to understand that. I've I I've seen non sanctioned matches before. No. Yeah, I've seen non sanctioned matches before. But they always had a ref out there and there was always a pinfall and all this kind of stuff. And it was just kinda of like, okay, what? I think you have to have some kind of resolution and the ref just serve it as a judge. 
even though the company ah. does not endorse what's going on in the ring. And that's to be stretching. That's some, that, that's doing some middle gymnastics to try to make this make sense. Okay, because I'm just, I guess it's me thinking too much. I'm just kind of like, well, they got a rest. I don't know. I, I guess, and my theory was like, it was kind of on the same line. Like the rest is out there just to kind of give a count just so there'd be a winner. But really, they're not really doing much else. And that's why all the nine sanctioned matches I've seen has been like no holds bar or anything goes or hardcore or whatever, however you want to call it. You know, anything can be involved, anybody can get involved, you know, that kind of thing. So, eh, it, it, it just, I guess it just kind of makes sense now that I think about it. But at the same time, it's kind of like, what? It's, it's confusing. Just a little bit. Just a little bit confusing. But just sitting there like, okay, but there's a rest out here, so how is it not like it? I don't know. I, people, I try to clear it up for some of you that was asking the same Just try to get a little clear. So, now I'm saying you're match between two people that's actually going to walk out the door. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so we got there. Uh, James Storrs defeats Magnus. Uh, Magnus is actually signed with Global Force, so I'll, I'll get into that a little later, too. Oh, okay. Uh, James Storm got his release. <sighs> we'll, we'll get into that later, too. Uh, EC3 and Tyrus defeat Lashley and Mr. Anderson. Right. Um, EC3 scored a pin on Lashley, which looked good. Here's the thing. That guy's the future. Yeah. That guy has to be the man. Definitely. Period, point blank. For the future of Yoko, that guy has to be the man. He's your guy. You groomed him. You got to go for it with him. I think the tag match was a step in the right direction. Um, King of the Mountain, Keish. Hey, all right. I'm going to say this because I... King of the Mountain rules are so confusing. <laughs> they're a little... If you're not paying attention to how, they're, how the match is structured, you're going to get confused. You're going to be like, what? Hey, wait, 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 what? It's... It, it's a little all over the place, but not really. Yeah. It was a good match, but still, it was just kind of like, when in the beginning, when it was described, it's like, okay, what? Hey, what? Okay, so he, and then, I don't know. Because it's, it's, it's a little backwards, in, in a, as opposed to the traditional Latin match. Because instead of pulling the belt down from up top, you're actually placing it up there. So, yeah. That's me just kind of analyzing King of the Mountain. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, all in all, it was what it was. And it wasn't a bad match. I thought it was a great match, actually. Interesting group of characters, I'm going to say. Yeah, um, it, the rules are confusing, right? It's like, okay, you got pinned... So are you eligible? Did you pin somebody? Are you eligible? What does this mean? You gotta go back in the cage. You know what I mean? Right. And All the best of stuff. Because it's like eligible for what? Why is he going in a cage? What is he doing? Okay, wait a minute. When are they gonna come out the cage? Like it's <laughs> it's it's, right. it's like what? Then, then you gotta get the belt. Then you put that in play, right? Right. Then you gotta get up the ladder and get it on the thing to win. Um. It was for the King of the Mountain title, which has been revived. Which is this is the fifth name for that belt. Started out as a Legends title, then it became the Global title, then it became the Television title. Now it's the King of the Mountain title, right? Right. And I think they just did this because they couldn't crown it the World Champion because Kurt Angle hasn't lost, so they didn't know what to do with it. Um. So the participants were Matt Hardy, Drew Galloway, uh, Bobby Roode, Jeff Jarrett, and I miss it, somebody else and that was in King of the Mountain. Jeff Jarrett. Matt Hardy? Got Matt. Got Drew. Um, 
It's one more person. Why are we both listening? Now? Eric Young. There you go. Eric Young. EY, long time TNA stalwart. Okay. Um, I was entertained. It was about a 25 minute match. I was happy to see everybody. But, uh, it came out with old slap nuts Jeff Jarrett winning it. Yeah. So, unless you know yeah. it's not a one time thing. What's going on with Global Force and TNA is not a one time thing at all. Right. That is rest assured. But what we got going on, I don't know. So, I, I will propose this to you, Keish. Because a lot of people are like, oh, they're going to do an invasion angle, which is pretty obvious, right? right. And all these guys are supposedly leaving. Are they really leaving? I don't think they, if they're doing the invasion angle, then no, they're not leaving. They're all. And, and that's why they're stocking the deck with the new guys. Right. Because right now, TNA, like, it's in trouble. Like, everybody's abandoning ship. So one or two things are happening. And maybe the Jarrett thing is an invasion angle, and they are just grasping their straws trying to make something pop, and a lot of these guys legitimately are leaving. Or what if global forces all the work? Uh, you know what? That makes a very good That's a very good question. What if global force and Jeff Lever, all of it was some long-term booking plan, and now he's coming back with global force, and go try to take over TNA with the evasion angle. But Global Force is a fake wrestler, and they used the internet, the dirt sheets, and all that to go ahead. He was negotiating TV deals, which still may be in place. And Global Force might be taking TNAs. Like, it might be the rebranding of TNA, right? Right. Global Force will take the, will, will win the evasion, take over the television spot, and that'll be that. Yeah. You know, it, you, it would make perfect sense. And not only that, but it'd be one of the greatest works I've ever seen in my life. Like, I I have to honestly say that. Like, it would be one of the best things I've ever seen in life. Because, think about it. It it would make the biggest play in TNA's history. Like, seriously? I, I really, because it's like, the fact that the list of wrestlers that are leaving, it's so long and so rapid and so quickly, it's starting to become unbelievable. It is. Like, it's starting to get to a point where it's like, is this really happening? Like, because every, every week it's at least three wrestlers that's like, oh, this person's leaving, that person's leaving, this person's leaving. And a lot of them, there is just, it's questionable. Do you really think James Thorne is just going to ask for his release? Like, just walk out like that? I mean, th here's where it goes. It's either really good or really bad, right? Right. Like, nobody has plans for James Storm. He hasn't signed with anybody. But you talk about he had just signed a five-year deal. He he asked to get out of that deal. The, the, James Storm is the most original T A guy, a guy there was. Only guy on the roster, besides Abyss, who's been around since the very first original show. Right. That says, if he's leaving, that there are some really deep embedded problems. Or maybe there's just, they just work at us. Exactly. I don't know what it is because TNA has been jacked up lately. I mean, horribly. Horribly. And maybe they use the precipice that it, that it has been so jacked up and people have bailed and left for other companies that, hey, maybe, and just maybe, people will buy into this angle. Right. But I don't know if it's an angle, Keish, and that's the crazy part about it. Yeah. I mean, but, the fact that you've seen other, the fact that you have seen some of these lessons that have left with other companies starts to really play into the question of it really being an angle or not. Like, it, that's the thing that makes you ask, like, okay, but if this is a work, then why are these wrestlers actually gone? Like, they're gone, gone. Like, we've signed contracts with other people and we're not coming back. Like, it's embedded. It's shown. Like, there's, we've gone elsewhere. So the people that's rapidly leaving at this point, it makes you question, is this real or not? Like, are they really leaving or no? Because there's so many of them. Like, the, some of the wrestlers that have left before, it was one here, one there, 
Now it's just like a whole list, a whole right. group of people that's leaving, like at the same time. Really? Are they really gone, or are they just saying that, you know, so we can watch? Because think about it, height rating end up happening when you realize that this person is going to be here for the last time. Is that the case? Is this what's really going on? You know, you never know. So, I guess we have to wait and play it out of people with things like Jeff Gary becoming the King of the Mountain champion happening, then that's when you really start to bring it back a little bit and be like, okay, seriously? Is this happening? Because then it's like, okay, so where is he going now that he's King of the Mountain champion? He's going nowhere. He's going to be right here. But who's going to be right here with him? He's the owner of Global Force quote-unquote, if global force is real, this is what's happening. And then, of course, if it is real, then you'll be bringing in everybody else that has already signed with him. But then that's then they create the whole evasion situation. So it's just a lot of things to think about and kind of sort through. But you really don't know the real details. Because let everything play out on TV as it is right now. Go forth to some totally different and people are leaving. They're just gone. And when the next show comes on, they're going to be gone. And they're going to continue to be gone. And that's going to be the end of it. Um, with that, that's the opening segment. And that's the opening TNA talk. We got a little bit more, but we're going to hit our break, as we usually do around this time of the show. Of course. And then we'll come back. Second part is locked and loaded. Oh, more. More TNA. Lots of WWE talk. Yeah. The Beast in the East oh. is going down Saturday morning. That's going to get discussed and previewed. Of course. So stay tuned. And, hey, man, we about to enjoy this wrestling. That's all I can tell you. I guess that uh, brings us to Mr. Jericho. You have the floor for 45 seconds. It's obvious that I'm surrounded by neophytes in this ring, surrounded by neophytes in this entire arena. But all of you need to quiet down because the true best in the world at everything I do is about to enunciate. You want facts? Here's a fact. There isn't a human being who's been in more Elimination Chamber matches on this planet than me. There isn't a human being that's eliminated more superstars in the chamber than me. The last time I was in a chamber match, I walked out the world heavyweight champion. I mean, seriously, let's be honest here. My list of accomplishments in my career outweighs the list of accomplishments of you five wannabes incorporated completely. I am here. All five of you are here. That brings me to you, punk. Look at me when I'm talking to you, boy. All right, punk, you might as well give me that world title right now because your master has come to reclaim what is his. Do you understand what I am saying to you right now? Everybody, we are back, and it's the birthday segment. We got birthdays, birthday. yay! All right, um, yesterday was Tuesday, June 30th, loaded day. 
Do you know Alicia Fox and Cody Rhodes share a birthday? They were born one year apart. Oh, yeah, thirty and twenty nine. Both of them. Which one older? Uh, Cody Rhodes by one year. Ah. Ah. Oh, who also shares a birthday with his uh, father's longtime rival, one Mister Terry Funk. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Uh, Terry turned 70. 71, actually. Awesome. That's going down. Um, no birthdays on J- J- July 1st. July 2nd, which is probably where you will hear this show, because that's probably when it will be posted. Uh, Brett, the Hitman Hart, turns 50. Yeah, 50. Am I reading this right? Yeah, it'll be sixty in two years. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, fifty-eight. Brett the Hitman Hart, uh, Scotty Two Hotty, current fireman, former member of Too Cool. Yeah, that's true. Turns forty-two, and then we skip ahead to July the fourth, America's birthday, uh, which is Saturday. Mm-hmm. The great Barry Windham will be celebrating the birthday. Barry Windham turns fifty-five. Oh. Vladimir Kozlov celebrates a birthday. Vladimir returned 43 in Mother <laughs> Russia. Um, and if you want to dig all the way to Sunday, Hill Billy Jim. Don't you know the country boy, country boy, country boy, turns 63. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jerry Sags, one half of the Nasty Boys, will turn 51 on Sunday. And that is it for birthdays, Keish. Birthday! This is probably one of the most loaded birthday weeks we've had in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So the last couple of weeks have been kind of slow. It's like, oh, we got one here and there and all this. So, nice to see a lot of birthdays. So let's get to the news. Uh, this week we got some sad news. Uh, Kurt Angle, one of the reasons why he wasn't at Slammiversary, he was uh, nursing a tumor in his neck that will require, sur- uh, that will require surgery. Oh, awful. Yes, uh, the tumor is not cancerous, apparently, but it still requires surgery and will have to be removed. That uh, is- we hope the best with Kurt, and, you know, because that's always scary. Yeah. I mean, it's good to know that it's not cancerous, but it's awful. Don't like to hear the word tumor, though, but, yeah, good job, Kurt, and I uh, hope, you know, everything works out okay, and, you know. Right. Not on no wrestling, but just on some human humanity. You know, hope he gets well soon. Um, so we discussed TNA stars leaving. Uh, Low Key is leaving the company. Hello? Uh, he was not on the pay-per-view, and his last match was, I think, Wednesday on television. But yeah, Low Key is out, so he has left the beatdown clan, which uh, Hernandez is taking his spot. Uh, who else is out? James Storm reportedly, reportedly is out. Magnus is reportedly out, even though he signed with Global Force. Austin right. Aries is out. Uh, he signed with a new ad agency that apparently was supposed to help him out. Not ad agency, but celebrity agency. Even though the name of the agency sounds a little suspect. Um, <laughs> All right. Gunner is out. And Kong and Terrell are not leaving. That's been stated. But... That's like five people, Keish. Exactly. That's exactly what I mean. Either this company is in major trouble or they setting up an angle. Right. What does that be? It's not hard to believe that this company might be in major trouble. Right. Well, the time will tell what's really going on. Because you know it all plays itself out. Because they're losing some talented people one way or the other. Right. So... Some young, some older, but they losing some talented people. Um, if you read the latest edition of Ray Pro Wrestling, uh, I have written like some ideas and possible destinations for three of the guys. So that's something you can chew on and study and maybe have some fun with or throw out your own ideas of where else people would go that could fit in. Exactly. Uh, speaking of other bad news for TNA, this one came down to Pike today. Pro Wrestling Illustrated will no longer recognize the TNA World Title as a World Championship. Oh, sweet Jesus! Ooh, that is a hit. The leading publication in professional wrestling journalism 
has said, fuck your world title to TNA. That is crazy. That's crazy. Like, they was just like, yeah, no, fuck that shit. Like, really? No, man. No. Like, I'm sorry. That is my soul reaction to all of that. Like, how do you just decide that you're just not going to recognize the world title in the rest of the country? Like, you're just going to be like, yeah, fuck that shit. Nope, they don't have a world title. We don't look at that. They don't count. Bye. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Like, there is no other word for that. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Um, don't really go into reasoning why. I mean, that's just a statement that's been dropped. And the only world title they recognize right now is the WWE. The WWE champion is recognized as the world champ. Period. Point blank. Wow. If you are the ROH, you just an ROH champion. If you just, if you're a TNA champion, you just a champion of TNA. That would not count as a world title on your record. So the only world title is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. That is the only recognized world title. I as of right now, according to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, yes. That's crazy. Uh, we at Ring Time Pro Wrestling have not made a decision on who we will recognize and the world champions we will recognize. <laughs> All right. That will come at a later date. Um, I'm not ready to make that abrupt of a move. Personally, I'm recognizing everybody right now. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> if it's the world title, it's, it's being recognized by me. I, I can't. Now until we discuss, like, what, but why, oh my God, how do you make decisions like that? Like, you're like, yeah, they count, but they don't. Like, that's, really? It, that's a very, very strong decision to make. You know? Yeah. I, 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 wow. I, I just have to wonder, like, who makes decisions like this? Like, who sits there and is just kind of like, yeah. So, we're not recognizing any world of titles. Just WWE, that's it. Everything else, fuck that shit. Like, who makes these decisions? Who is actually behind all of that? I need to know. I, need to know. I don't know who made the official call, but that's what's going down. I, I mean, I'll, I'll wait to see the fallout. But the lead publication, the publication that produces the PWI 500, which everybody's trying to get so on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The publication who I suggest to do a PWI Top 100 Writers, because I know I'd be in the Top 100 of all the writers. I mean, I really think I'm the best in the world, <laughs> but that's another story. Yeah, Keith, you're I'm awesome. sorry. This side of Bill after Dave Meltzer, uh, you're not really messing with the kid. Exactly. Period, point blank. Oh. Can't put a mark on a champ. Your arm's too short to box with God. <laughs> you just... <laughs> okay. I'm not dealing with you. I swear I'm not. Ladies and gentlemen, I disassociated myself with my brother. He has no sense. But I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. I ain't dealing with it. But yeah, you are a terrible writer. So, I'm just going to recognize it. Thanks. Just put it out there. Get your life together. Okay, apparently from what Meltzer is saying is that there will be an evasion angle with Global Force and TNA. Oh, okay. Um, originally, they said Global Force presented the idea to ROH, but ROH rejected the idea. It was like, no, we're not doing it. Bye. Okay. And TNA may have rejected it too a few months ago, but now they like, no, we need some help. Exactly. So, yeah. I think let's, this would be great for us. Let's get popping, because Innovation Angle will create the buzz. The buzz will get cracking. Right. So that's why so many people are jumping shit at the same time. I knew it had to be something, because I know they ain't just running around here just leaving like that for no reason. Come on, man. Stop it. Oh. But, but uh, right. all right. But uh, other than that, uh, Alex Shelley has returned to ROH. That's awesome. Motor Machine, Machine Gun fame, TNA fame, New Japan Pro Wrestlers, where he's been playing his trade lately. He will come home to ROH. So you will get what, see what happened to Gun stateside. Hopefully, save it somewhere in wrestling and they form back together like Voltron. Right. And uh, knock that out. 
So, uh, yeah. We'll see how that works out. And with that, Keish, on to the big company, WWE stuff. Oh, Lord. What Your thoughts so talk? Man, Your thoughts so man. Raw was so ridiculous. And I'm not saying ridiculous in a bad way. Raw just got me. I mean, I was like, really, though? It, <sighs> After watching it in its entirety, I had to just be like, really? Like, it, there was not a moment. It was just moments where I was kind of like, really? Like, I, I couldn't. It was a good show. Well, it was definitely a good show to me. Um, this one was, it was good. I have to give it its props. Um, uh, especially, especially how it came in and the way that it ended. I was, I was done. I was done. Like, I was done after the first segment. I was done. So, I, the whole show itself, awesome. I, I, Rob gets his props for Monday night. I'm just saying. I have to put that in. That, that, that's my initial thought. Like, like, what else do we get into all the individual stuff? I give my opinion for those. But, in overall sense of Rob, my opinion of Rob, it was good. I was, I enjoyed the show. I must say. So, WWE, you get applause for me for Rob for Monday night. And sometimes I just don't get those out. Um, overall, I thought it was a decent show. Uh, Seth Rollins is a good slimy heel. Oh, he's awesome. <laughs> he yeah, I awesome. think he's a he's a terrible person, and uh, it showed. Yes, one hundred percent. Um, they followed the beat down of Brock as they should by Gloat. Right, in the best way possible. <laughs> and uh. I might need to go work for Seth Rollins. You know what, Keith? After watching the show, I said the same thing. Like, I was like, can I just slide in there and just, like, walk out with y'all or just give you encouragement or something? Can I get an Apple Watch in a car? Everybody got Apple Watches. Kane going to Hawaii. J&J Security got a, a new caddy. I mean, can I get a car and an Apple Watch and all that? Uh-huh. I'm just saying. I, I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs> Like, I'm doing it all wrong. There's obviously something missing in life to where we're not a part of this. Like, why are we not a part of this? What the hell? Like, can I? And it was crazy, Keith, because, like, the old, I want to I wanna say old and new Seth. This is just how I put it. Uh, Seth now is so appreciative. Seth now is so grateful. And Seth now shows his appreciation to all three members of the story that helped him beat down broccoli and i mean in like the best way possible apple watches vacation cars come on man really that yeah like i said i might need to go work for the thor- the authority <laughs> just go i'm doing this exactly. i'm doing this all wrong exactly we like look if you get me on right I swear to you, I hit anybody with a chair that you're going to be. No questions asked. <laughs> no questions asked. Just, just, I would come to the ring with Stephanie like her new Farsworth Bentley. <laughs> and do the dances with the umbrella and everything. I'm just saying, like, who wouldn't? Really? I'm pretty sure a lot of people that even hated Stephanie was like, but can I get an Apple Watch, though? Like, <laughs> like I want the car... Can I get that car? Like, I just, I seriously saw the car and was like, so I need to be riding one of those. Just slide me a car. car can I, what? It was crazy. He was just like, you earned it. And I love you. You're so awesome. And it was just kind of like, are you serious right now? Like, it's funny because like a, it's, Watching it, if you didn't know what was going on, then you just kind of be like, oh, he's such a nice guy. No, he's not. He's really not. He's awful. Like, <laughs> Seth Rollins is so awful, but. No, I hear you. For like two seconds, you want to work for him. You're like, yeah. So about this Apple Watch in this car, can I, can I get in and on this? 
I'm just saying. Apple Watch is key. Apple Watch. That's all. None of these. But, uh, gifts. the night moved on. Yeah, I'm just saying. None of these gifts were, were cheap people. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Big Show took old Mark Henry and, of course, beat him because he had to beat him. Yeah. And uh, we worked out this angle for right back in Miz. Miz was on commentary. He ended up, you know, getting himself in trouble. Right. But uh, that, that happened. Um, where do you see this page of Bella's angle going, Keish? Okay, What's going to happen? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's just my initial words. Um, nothing. Uh, I think it's just going to keep being as awful as it already is. Because, like, the way things look, there's never going to be anyone on Paige's side. So I don't understand why this is continuing. Like, I understand she's not going to give up the fight and she's going to be one man and all that. Well, one woman, a one woman fight against the Bella and now Alicia Fox being a part of Team Bella and all that kind of stuff. But, if you're not going to change anything about it, then end this, please. Because I just don't see anything changing about it. No one's joining Paige. Everybody hates Paige. But they don't like the television either. So, like, they're not on their side either. What's the point? I mean, really, what is the point? And even if you put someone with Paige, then they're going to just set them up to, for her to turn her back on later. That what sense does this make exactly? I mean, she's not she's winning matches against them, but she's not gonna lose she's not winning the title and it's like why is this going on still and all oh, the bellas are running everything. Really they're not, but okay. Like <laughs> like I really you know, honestly in my opinion, like the bellas are not running anything actually. The Divas position itself is just kinda in the background but not really. And they're like, she's like, the Bellas against the world. Well, the Bellas are not doing too much of anything at this point. They're just, Nikki's holding the title, Breathe there for support, and the Leash Fox is doing the team. Right? That's pretty much what I'm looking at right now. Paige is just trying to come up with some reason for her to fight them every week. It's just kind of like, why? Do you really have a reason? Or are you just, you're just hateful? Like, I don't understand it. The whole angle is just awful. Like, it makes zero sense at times, and it's just like, okay, can y'all figure out something else to do with them? Because they obviously don't have anything with this to do. And it's crazy because there's so many other divas in the bank. Like, can you have them have matches against each other and whatnot? Take the Bellas away for like a week or two. Like, I just... I mean, of course, Nikki's champion, and that's what the one Bella that you want to focus on. She she holds the title, but it's like with this whole page situation, it's just really ridiculous. That's like the best way that I can describe all of that. It's really ridiculous. It just makes zero sense to me. Yeah. Um. Cesaro took on Sh- uh, Cena in the open challenge. Uh. Set up by Owens, who who was on commentary. Easy match of the night, Keish. Yes. Best yes. match I've seen in a long time. Yes. I, Cesaro worked his ass off. I agree. Cesaro brought it 110%. 100%. Like, if, if you don't think this guy Cesaro has it, I don't know what to tell you. No, I do know what to tell you. You're crazy. Like, <laughs> that's, that's going to be me telling you that. You're crazy. You lost your mind. You need to go back and rewatch some of his matches. Like, Cesaro is awesome. Awesome. Every level of awesome. His strength, his agility, his speed. Everything about his ring work is just great. I, I can't say enough about it. Like, this this was match of the night, hands down. Like, I, I've watched, as, as a matter of fact, I watched this match twice because I wanted to make sure I got everything out of it that I did. I hated the ending, but of course, that was expected to happen. Um... But yeah, definitely matching the night. Cesaro has so much potential, so much potential. Like I, he's that right there is part of the future of the WWE. Cesaro, definitely. I, I just I can't say anything else. 
Yeah, no, I I thought um, I thought the edit was good. I thought it allowed everybody to be strong. Cedar didn't have to get the win. Cesaro didn't have to lose. Right. It was always, you know, a blind side attack. Um, all in all, I I could watch that match about four times over and over again. Uh, that being said, so is Lana a full time wrestler now? I am trying to figure it out myself. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, in the next week or two, we see her in a wrestling outfit. Like, to tell the truth, she it's not like she wasn't holding her own in that ring, but at the same time, it's questionable. You know, are they going to have this? Is she going to wrestle? And if she is, is she going to have this angle where, you know, they pretend like she's just, she's never done this before, and then all of a sudden she's suplexing people in. You know, it's just, it, it, I wonder, can I just, huh? huh? And I'm like, did it really have to be summer, right? I'm sorry, I just, I can't stand summer. Uh, with everything I love, I can't stand summer. So, just seeing her face and voice, eh, it was awful. I understand mm-hmm. that Rusev calls himself kind of like finding another woman. But, this is where I think too much. Because I'm like, for someone that hated America, that hates America so much, you bring out an American with you? Like, huh? What? I don't know. At, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just saying, like, it just made zero sense to me because it was like, so you spent all this time, like, spitting on America and everything else, but then, like, as soon as the blonde haired chick shows you some attention, then all of a sudden she's by your side. Like, I don't, I, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Um, other than that, in Raw, I'm tired of Bray Wyatt, Keisha. Yeah. Me too. Is Roman Reigns going to get through a match without Bray showing up? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Keith, the match was won. Like, the match was going great. And then, bam, he shows up out of nowhere. Like, come on, man. Stop this shit. It's one thing that he's playing in mind games with him. I understand that. Great. But can you not have him doing anything physical to him? Like, for once, I, can the not go black and everything goes black and then he shows up beating the shit out of Roman? Like, I don't want to see this every week. Like, he has the upper hand, but I think they're doing it just because they need to sell the idea that Bray and beat him. Right. And give you the idea, what if Roman Reigns is in danger? What if he's in doubt? How does that work? Which is understandable, but it's just like, can you just create another way for that to happen without Bray having to actually physically touch him or show up or interrupt. Stop having him interrupt matches. That is annoying me. I want to just see the end of the match and be done with it. You know, let Roman win. Like, just let him win. Or at least let him lose clean or something. Can you just stop this? It's annoying me. Because it's kind of like it's one thing that he's doing the video vignette. That's perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine with the video vignettes and everything. But can you just not have him uh, actually showing up and doing anything? Like, that's really annoying me. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea behind it is that they got to build this up. They got five weeks, and they got to really get you bought in that this matters. Right. So, I, I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. You know what I mean? Uh, I but, uh, I let's talk Beast of the East, Keish. We run, run a little time, and people got to get to bed, people got to work in the morning, all that good shit. Which is understandable. Right, let's get to Beast of the East, because uh, we need to talk about this card, okay? We definitely need to talk about this card. Uh, it's basically titled Beast of the East, because... Brock is fucking huge in Japan. Over big time. If you don't remember, he was once the New Japan World Champion. Right. Uh, when he left the WWE, tried to play football, didn't work out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, becoming a former UFC superstar, has a lot of worldwide notoriety. That's why it's called the Beast of the East. Uh, the card is an eclectic card. It's not people who traditionally would wrestle each other, but... 
I think has put together a big show, right? Uh-huh. And before anything was announced, we knew Kevin Owens and Finn Balor were going to have their match in Japan, right? Right. Uh, it means a lot for Finn. It's going to be a lot for everybody who attends. I think they're going out of their way to make it really special uh, to the fact that they're broadcasting live on the WWE Network. And if you're willing to get up at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday, you know, July the 4th, where, you know, later the family going to be barbecuing and stuff, so you might want some sleep. Right. Get up at 5.30 in the morning and watch this wrestling. Right. Come get this work. And that's Eastern time, because if you live on, on the Pacific, we're talking 2.30. Two thirty. Woo, honey. Mm-mm. Nah, 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 nah. But, uh, yeah, so let's go down the card. Uh, Lucha Dragons take on the New Day. Uh, basically, this is subbing it out. The New Day was going to take on Kid and Cesaro, but of course, uh, Kid is hurt with his neck problem. Right. Uh, I think the Lucha Dragons win in Japan. Oh, yeah, definitely. I just I don't see them losing in Japan. I think because that audience wants to see something similar, and I think they'll be very happy, and that that'll go over very well with them, right? Right. Um, Nikki Bella defends her title against Paige Naomi in a triple threat. Awesome. I think um, Nikki got the trip because she wanted to ride with her boyfriend. Oh yeah. But uh, hey, to each his own. Good job, and uh, you know, get uh, get out there and have fun, right? Right. Um, th- this will be the first time you get to see Chris Jericho in a long time. Yeah, Ooh. Jericho has been touring around with the WWE this summer, but he hasn't done any television dates. Very weirdly, he just has done house shows and hasn't done any television dates. So, uh, hey. Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Okay. But he's taking on Devil, the man that Gravity forgot, and I think Chris Jericho might ground Devil a little bit. Yeah. I think so, too. Hey, I'm going to be glad to see Chris in the ring again. I love Jericho. I think he's awesome. So, kudos, kudos. Yeah, I'm going to change it. Out, but, uh... Cesaro will take on Diego, which is pretty much Diego one half of the Los Matadors. Uh, I think it's Primo. Pretty much you know how this goes. Cesaro wins with a big uppercut. Right. No need to drag that on. Uh, hopefully he works through everything that's going on and my man get his big break. Yeah. Right? That's what it's all about. Uh Kevin Owens will defend the NXT Championship against Finn Baylor. Oh, that's going to be an awesome match. Uh, I think this is Finn's time. I think it specifically happened in Japan for a reason. Right. It's his spot. Uh, tomorrow night at 1030 on the WWE Network, if you got time, they're doing a little uh, bio thing on Finn Baylor. So I, I suggest you all, you guys watch it. I think it's going to be good and entertaining. Uh, but yeah, Baylor, I think wins this one. I think the high fly going. Also, it makes room for him to go to the main roster. This is probably the last Owens match in NXT. Right. And then he take that belt and lose on Raw or something, as, or becomes the IC champion, and you know, cause some problems there. Oh my God, this match! I'm so anticipating this match. It's gonna be great. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm too excited about this. So, go Finn. Right. So, I mean, I think that's going to be huge. Um, that's one of the big draws to the show is right. a guy who made a day for himself is coming home. Um, so, yeah, I think Baylor becomes a new NXT champion. Um, after that, Brock Lesnar takes on Kofi Kingston. Why? <laughs> oh, I'll give it to you. Why? Kofi is entertaining a good enough, enough ring general to put together the kind of match that I think would impress the Japanese crowd, but at the end result, we know it's just going to lead to blackout. Exactly. Blackout. But we'll see how it works out. Uh, still got a couple of years. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. So, ah, uh, but yeah, I 
I guess I mean, once you explain it like that, then I understand it. But when I first seen it on a card, I was like, why? Who made this matchup? Right. Kofi and Brock? What? No. No, they just won't do. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, that's not the last match, though. That's not the only one, is it? Because we got one more on the card. Right. I think it's a tag team match. Uh, the tag team match will feature John Cena, Dolph Ziggler taking on Kang and King Barrett. Um, not a lot to go on there. I'm assuming Ziggler and Cena win. Get the crowd out on a happy note. A lot of clapping and cheering. Yeah! Hey, I mean, it's a commercial for the product is what it is. What is it's awesome. a commercial for like, hey man, you can really be watching this in Japan. Oh, I think it's great. That's what I think. I think it's freaking awesome. So, I will be watching. Definitely. And I right. suggest everybody else watch it. If you have the network, get up, set your alarm. When I, I'll be up, because I'll be getting my work. So, I definitely will be up. Alarm is already set, so it, it's going to be interesting, right? Exactly. So, all in all, I think it's going to be an excellent show. Excellent show, and uh, it's it's going to accomplish its point. Right. So, with that being said, uh, Keisha, any part of shots, shout outs, anything you got to say? Yes, I do. So, Impact just ended, and EC3 is now the new TNA heavyweight champion. I, I just want to put that out there. He won by a roll-up pin on a Kurt Angle. Tyrus was thrown out beforehand, so he had no help. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, EC3 is now the new TNA champion. Just had to put that out there. Um, also, uh, as I normally do every week, I want to thank everyone for that listens to the show. Even if you just it's just your first time, or you look to it every week, we still appreciate you and love you. And I like to give a big round of applause to my brother Keith because he's awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll be back next week, probably the same day, with uh, some recap and just see what's going on. Uh, so, with that being said, we are out. Bye. Peace.